What's up everybody? Today I'm gonna to be walking you through how to port your 392 or even your 5.7 intake. Uh, it's a pretty simple process. I do get a lot of questions and messages about this as well as um, you know what to do, what's expected. So I'm gonna go through everything start to finish. Um, so we're kind of just gonna pretend that you just pulled off your intake manifold. This is exactly how you'd pull it off. Uh, you still have the elbow, fuel rail, map sensor, your SRV actuator, and we also still have the injectors. The only thing you won't have is the fuel rail. I mean, this is just cut off, so it won't matter too much. Uh, some of the things that you'll need, you'll need a 14 millimeter wrench, socket wrench, ratchet wrench to get off the fuel rail, um, a silver metallic Sharpie, 10 millimeter socket, a T15, um, and then I use my drill with, I believe this is a two inch uh, sanding wheel. And then I use my Dremel uh, with the 120 grit uh, sandpaper with the Dremel extension. And that's pretty much all you need to really get started. Um, so to keep this as fair as I can, you know, I'm gonna go through everything start to finish. So we'll start with uh, removing the fuel rails and then we want to take out the map sensor. We want to take off the SRV. We want to take off the elbow. We want to take off the cap. We basically want this to be completely bare because we're going to get all kinds of plastic shavings everywhere. <clears throat> and when we're done, we want to go ahead and rinse it and dry it. So to make sure nothing gets ruined, we want to make sure we remove everything. Okay, so for some of the easier steps, we're just going to go ahead and take off the oil fill cap. Set that aside. Um, let me take off this fuel hose make sure I don't use that clip never know if I'll need this again and then for these fuel rail bolts uh, you can just use a 14 you want to loosen them until you can get them off by hand which I've already done okay and once those come off you can kind of just Give it some force to pop off the fuel rail. Okay. And then this does have a lot of gunk on it, so, and there's a little bit of gas, so make sure you move that out of the way. Then we're gonna spin it. Then you can see right here, we have our map sensor. Now, if you have a map sensor, on your 5.7 or a 5.7 manifold or you're using a 6.4 manifold and you have the 5.7 map sensor, this step's not for you. The 5.7 manifold manifold map sensor just twists in. Um, there's no screw for it, so it might not apply to everyone. You just go ahead and just back this off. And then make sure you do not lose this screw this just wiggles out. Make sure your O-ring stays intact. Set that aside. Next up is the three SRV actuator bolts. They're just a simple 10 mil. Then you just wanna pop those off one at a time. It might be easier if you back them out each a little bit at first to kind of reduce the torque on there. And then you can go ahead and just thread those out. hardware side here's the actuator if anyone is looking for the part number for your 392 swap there it is 503-8529AC that'll get you a brand new actuator the reason you need those is because there is an opening here because there's a gasket there that means that this could cause um, vacuum leaks if you'd run it without the actuator. So that's why it's important to have. Now that that's done, um, you will have a PCV valve 
Um, I already removed this one, forgot about it, but you want to make sure you remove this valve as well. Then I'm going to take off this elbow, that way I don't damage it. I'm just taking a flathead and just kind of breaking that seal. And once you do that, it comes right off. Okay, so now we're looking at the bottom side of this manifold. Um, you will have gaskets here. Uh, I left one on for demonstration purposes. You can take a small flathead or a pick and you literally just get inside the groove there and you just pop it out. And then just like that, take them out, okay? So all of these ports have a groove here that you can stick a pick or a small flathead in to get those out. Um, so there's one right here, I forgot the other side. So you will have all of these plus eight of the runner ports. Now, one thing I will be mindful of, these will be full of oil even if you have a catch can. So before you set it down on your table or anything, you might just want to take a rag and kind of just clean that off a little bit. It'll also help us see <clears throat> the port lines and how we're actually going to port match these to the cylinder heads. All right. And the last one that we want to take off is actually the throttle body gasket. I already have this one removed, but you'll have a gasket here as well. So we want to take that off. And then once you have those gaskets off, you can start cleaning everything up and doing what you need to do. So let's see if I can get a good enough video here for you to show you the importance of porting. All right, let's see. So you can see inside this port, um, there's lips. So you can see those lips on the side there, that lip down at the bottom of the port. And every single port is slightly different. Okay, so there's a good look at it. There you go. Okay, so you can see those grooves. Here's the other side. And every port is a little bit different. Okay, so there's a good view. So you can see here on the left, This concave literally is an obstruction of airflow. So what it does is it's not smooth. It causes a lot of turbulence in there. There's a good view right there. You can hear me flicking it down there. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna smooth all that out. And if we look closely, you can see like heat marks around every port. And those heat marks, that's actually from the cylinder head. So this middle line here is where the cylinder head actually starts. So if we remove this front material here, then we will have a port matched port. And that's why we're going to use our silver metallic highlighter to outline all of those ports for us. And then we can go ahead and have a nice smooth port. So we can have them port matched get everything optimal as well. And the same is also true for the throttle body. So you can see that line there where we actually have, that's where the gasket and the throttle body start. So you have all this extra material where you can open up, you can literally open this opening wider to match the throttle body on your intake. Um, I don't have my millimeter right now, but usually it's about like a four to five millimeter increase. So these thought, these openings, you can open them up like four, five, sometimes even six millimeters, depending on the casting of the manifold. So that's our goal here as well. You can also see inside here, we have a lot of obstructions, a lot of cast flash is what they call or flash casting, okay? So causes a lot of disturbance in the airflow. So you can see there, I can literally pick it. So we're gonna smooth all that out. All right, so here's an example 
um, of where and how much material I can take out of the throttle inlet port. So all I did was take my um, metallic Sharpie and I basically just traced a, that line, that groove. So all of this silver material is material that I can safely take away without exceeding the port size or um, exceeding basically the port match of the throttle body. This is gonna give it a nice smooth transition from the throttle body to the intake. So I'm gonna open up all of that and I'm just gonna keep going and keep going and keep going until I get back here. I'm gonna get all this in here as well. Remove that lip and as far as I can reach, I'm gonna keep going in there, okay? So let me show you now on the intake ports. All right, so here's an up close look at the ports. So this is was after I used again, you know, just your silver metallic Sharpie. All I did was just outline the burn marks or the marks that the cylinder heads leave imprinted on each port. And you can see that every port is a little bit different. So while this one has a lot on the sides, uh, this one over here barely has any right here. So the one thing I'd recommend for you guys is to really take your time, um, use a strong flashlight to really help you outline um, those ports because you'll see you'll see the difference you'll you'll be able to see it right away I don't know if the camera is picking it up for you or not um, So now I know how far I can go out on my ports And then I'm gonna come in here again, and I'm gonna smooth All of this out on the, in, on the inside um, So this one's really bad right here So I'm about three four feet uh, inches deep And there's a big old casting flash inside this port Let's see if we can see it so down there it is right there so you can see how uneven these ports actually are so as well as how oily they are so catch cans highly recommended on these cars no matter what people say you have oil on your intake you need a catch can all right to get started i'm going to start with the throttle body inlet area um, again i'm using my sanding disc and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go forward and back as well as in circle rotations. And I'm slowly gonna work my way around the perimeter of here, trying to bring back the silver material. So here we go. There is a lot of oil. So what I'm gonna do actually is I'm gonna clean that really quick. Oil that's just sitting there so it doesn't clog up my sanding disc. Okay, here we go. So we're just a you know maybe a minute in and you can already see how much smoother this port's looking so it's nice and smooth i gotta get a little deeper here to get this um taken care of and smoothed out um, every once in a while i would recommend that you kind of pause and check to see kind of where you're at so we're going to keep on keep on going So we can already see that our line is slowly starting to shrink. Uh, you can see all the material that's down here under the intake. So I'm gonna speed through this process, check back in when I'm all done. All right, so here's where I'm at now. So you can see there's only like little remnants left of the silver line, which were kind of more um, like over markings where I went too far because you can still see the actual imprint along the edge there um, So it still still looks real good. I might go a little bit longer on it uh, But you can see how much smoother all of this is here. This lip is gone This lip is gone uh, This lip here is gone. You can see the outline of the cast, but it's still smooth to the finger So nice and uniform nice and round so that's kind of what you want to see when you're done with yours um, so happy with this one so let's move on show you guys the actual ports themselves on the bottom side so for the ports here 
I start off with uh, my Dremel extension. And what I do is I come down here and I angle out all of the white line. That way so I know where my port begins. And then I spend the rest of the time um, straightening it all out and then smoothing the inside of the port. So for the sake of the video, I'll kind of just skim through a little bit of this. Uh, fast forward it probably, that way you guys can get to the results rather than sitting here watching me do it. All right, so about a minute or two in, here's where we're looking at. So you can see my port is nice and smooth now. Uh, not yet done, gonna clean it up a little bit. But you can see that port is nice and clear cut. Got those lips out of there. So we're basically gonna rinse and repeat seven more times. All right, so here we are. We are done with the four ports on this side. Um, it's pretty dirty, so it, it doesn't look smooth just because of all the shavings and whatnot that are inside and stuck to the walls. Um, but you can see it's smooth down as far as we can get. I've opened up all the ports. Everything is smooth to the touch. Um, that lip that you guys always saw on the sides is completely gone. Nice and level port. So now all I gotta do is just finish the other side, retouch up the throttle body inlet, and then this is pretty much done. Get it all cleaned up and button it back together. All right, so the other side's ready to go. So just remember, this is one of the most important steps, especially when you're wanting to widen your port. Uh, so make sure you take your time and that you're getting it correctly. Um, Cause the last thing you wanna do is go too far and have not enough room on the side of your ports and get a crack or anything like that. So you wanna make sure you keep it structurally sound. There's enough material between the inside of the port and the outside. So after I work on making sure I clear the port match, so you can see this lip here, this angle. Um, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that when I'm doing the inside of the port that I'm going with the direction of the port. So I'm gonna be going down this way until this angle basically disappears to my top line. I don't wanna be trying to angle anywhere else because I wanna follow the direction of the port with all of my angles. Um, so I'll put a little, little more juice into this one. So we'll get rid of that whole lip that's all the way around. And then that's how we'll get a nice and straight port down and with a very nice clean port match. So there it is. So this is port number one on the other side. Nice and smooth to the touch. Got rid of the lips all over there on both sides. Just looks like a there's just a lot of extra shavings down in there so it doesn't look as smooth as it actually feels. So I just need to do these last three, touch it up. So let's keep it moving. All right, so we are finally all done. So all of our ports have been opened. All of our spots have been smoothed on the inside, removed all of the casting flash. Um, so now I'm gonna show you guys how to get this cleaned up. Uh, so basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a blower, I'm gonna go into the throttle inlet and I'm gonna try and blow everything out and then go through each port individually and then throw some water on it, rinse it out really quick and we'll let it dry. Once it's dry, put it back together and it's ready to go back on your car. So 
now with most of that blown out, we can see how good we did here. So you can see how deep our port job is. Everything is nice and smooth. Ports are opened up. Let me show you the throttle inlet. So throttle inlet is nice and smooth all the way back in. So quality port job, quality port job. All right, now that it's all wiped down, we've got it ported out. We wanna go ahead and put all of our components back on. So we'll start with the oil fill cap. SRV actuator, uh, plug points down onto the back. Then you want to make sure you put the first bolt in by hand because this is a plastic manifold, so it is pretty easy to strip those out. Okay, then we want to put our map sensor back in. Then if you have your PCV valve, you want to go ahead and make sure that's thrown back on there. Um, your fuel rails. So you can just set that back in there. Push down those injectors back into place. And then you're... All right, and there you have it. So it's, it's how you want, go ahead and port your 392 or your 5.7 intake manifold. The process is the same. The only difference with the 5.7 is you won't have a SRV motor. You won't have a map sensor that screws in. Here's a close up view of the throttle, throttle, the throttle intake or inlet port. So you can see we got pretty pretty deep inside the um, manifold. Everything looks nice and smooth. Here's how the intake ports look. Nice and smooth. Ports are much wider now. All right, guys, thanks for watching. If you made it this far on how to port your 392 or your 5.7 intake manifold, um, step-by-step -step procedure, simple tools, uh, doesn't take anything expensive or that really that much of a challenge just takes patience um, if you like the con the content that i've been putting out i appreciate you guys um, thank you for everyone who's supporting the channel supporting me letting me work on your car tune your cars i really appreciate it uh, if you guys need help or concerns feel free to drop a comment if you want to get in touch with me about tuning porting services or um, basically any kind of performance or modification needs just you can direct message me on instagram at reperformance until the next video, thank you guys for watching.